Hello everyone. Well, you may have wondered why I have not posted a video in, I think, two or three weeks. And the main reason for that is I've been learning a new skill, and that is sewing. I started on this path because I wanted to learn how to alter my own shirts. It's very hard for me to find shirts that have the right sleeve length for me. So I took a sewing class, just a basic how to run the sewing machine. Really enjoyed it and decided to take it one step further and actually learn how to sew a shirt from a pattern. So I figured once I knew that, I would be able to understand how a shirt is put together and I would be able to better alter it. So while I was learning this new skill, most of my time and energy was put towards that. And I figured that it would be a great way to combine this new skill with ASMR videos. So that is what I am testing right now. I am recording this speaking audio track on a separate recording from the sounds of the sewing machine so that I can control the volume of both of them. Because this sewing machine is pretty quiet, but still, I think it could be overwhelming at times if I try to record both the speaking and the sewing at the same time. And this also allows me to focus on one task at a time. Because I am still just learning. It is often very easy for me to make a mistake. And if you are someone who knows how to sew, and you're watching this video, I apologize because I'm sure I've made several already. What I'm doing now is basically just testing the sound quality and the sound levels and how I'm actually going to put all of this together. So I'm not actually making anything. I'm just trying some different stitches. Here I did a zigzag stitch across the seam of the fabric and that keeps the fabric from fraying once it's all put together. And here I'm testing the strength. And you can see the individual little threads poking through. And when you would iron that seam down, you would be looking for those threads so that you knew you had a nice sharp seam. So this is some fabric I had left over from making my first sewing project, which was a bag. So I'm setting some different settings, getting ready for a different stitch. I'm going to try a few different things. Some different seam allowances. This is going to be an edge seam. And normally you would press this with an iron, but if I get really, really fancy with my videos and actually do some tutorial instructions, I will probably have to show the ironing process because that is very, very important to making sure that your final product looks good, it is sewing your seams and then ironing them down. But for this, I'm just going to do a quick edge seam, pressing it with my fingers running it through. See my hand gets in the way sometimes so I need to work on that. Making sure that you can see the action of the sewing machine. So this being a test video, please let me know if this is something you find relaxing. Do you get ASMR from any of this? I know there's close handwork which is always good. 
but do you also enjoy the sounds and the motion of the sewing machine? So now I'm going to just trim this off again. I don't really have a plan here. I'm just kind of going along, doing some different stitches. I think I'm going to turn this into some sort of like little pouch or something with three different stitches on three different sides. It's been very interesting and fascinating for me to learn this process. I'm currently making a shirt out of a different type of fabric than this, obviously. And I am learning how careful you have to be when it comes to making something like a shirt. Making a bag that someone's just going to throw on their shoulder um, is one thing. And here I'm practicing my technique of turning the fabric. You make sure the needle is down, and then you turn the fabric around the needle, and then you continue to sew. But I'm learning that when you sew clothing that is going to fit on someone's body, that sometimes the cloth needs to be coerced and forced to fit around these curves, especially like your shoulders in your sleeves. So putting a collar on a shirt that is from a flat piece of fabric and now you're trying to make that piece of fabric drape around a three-dimensional shape like someone's shoulders or around someone's neck it takes a lot of finessing and working with the fabric to make it lay right and there's a lot of detail in that which I really enjoy. Here I'm turning it inside out. I can only go so far with my finger, so I'm poking it down, working with it here, and then I'm going to go get a pencil that I can use to turn it inside out some more. Because you want to make sure you get the corners nice and crisp, and that means pushing all of the fabric all the way up to where the threads are actually showing through. And I'm slowly getting there. I'm trying to keep it in the middle of the camera frame too so that it will focus on it. So there we go. You always start with your printed side or the right side of your fabric together when you're making a seam with the inside to the outside then when you sew it all together you flip it around and the right sides are showing on the outside and for something like this it's obviously pretty simple this is like a little pillow or something but sometimes when you're making a shirt um, trying to figure out how you're going to flip it around you definitely need the pattern to do that so that you're sewing the sides together that you should so when you flip it around it looks right. One thing I don't have here in this video is working with paper patterns. I imagine that would also be a very nice ASMR experience. So I'm going to be doing that in another video. Especially the type of really thin tissue paper type of patterns. They have a really nice crinkly sound. So when I am done with this testing, I'm going to start really thinking about how to bring you guys a series of ASMR videos that kind of goes from start to finish making something. I'm not sure. Maybe some pants or a shirt is pretty complicated. I think I'm going to wait before I do a video on that. But maybe like a bag or a pillowcase or something really simple that you can guys, you guys can see the process and the steps you go through to actually making something out of cloth. Here 
and stitching together the two little pieces. I don't think you would ever actually stitch these two pieces together in a real thing you were making. Here I made it. I kept pushing on the foot, on the pedal with my foot, so I had to release it. And I really like this sewing machine. I think it's spoiled me a little bit, but it's the only one I've ever worked on. It has an automatic cut, and it has an automatic back stitch. When you start a stitch, you want to sew forward a little bit, and then you sew backward a little bit, and then you sew forward a little bit again, and that captures the thread inside of the cloth and keeps it from unraveling from one end. On this sewing machine, it has an automatic stitch that it starts every stitch with. You can turn it on or off. And so it automatically does the forward and backwards stitching very, very tight. So you'll notice if I start this stitch, there's several stitches that happen before the thread, the cloth actually starts moving. And that's the fixing of the back stitch feature. Now I'm doing another zigzag stitch. I sewed this seam with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, which is basically the measurement between the edge of the cloth and where the thread is actually put into the cloth. And that's 5 8 of an inch, and that's a seam allowance that's usually used when you're sewing clothing. So here I hit the fix button. It stitches several different stitches, quick stitches automatically cuts it off and so that edge will not unravel then I'm going to do the same thing here on this end and I'm going pretty quickly because I want to see what the sound is like doing a relatively fast stitch because if you have to go slow for every single stitch, it will take a really long time. Now there's some things, when like you're sewing around a corner, you really slow down a lot, or at least I do. And because sometimes you're really working with the fabric, trying to get it to lay flat and not bunch up while you're sewing around a corner. So sometimes it's sew a stitch, work with the fabric, sew a stitch, work with the fabric. Um, it can be kind of tedious. But again, trying to get a flat piece of fabric to fit around a three-dimensional shape or object or body takes a lot of finessing to work with it. So that's kind of a basic 5 8 inch seam. There's a lot of other seams I'm learning. Um, one is called a French seam and the other is called a flat felled seam, I believe. And I'll be showing you, once I get more proficient with them, I'll be showing you how to do those seams. But for right now, I'm definitely still in a learning stage. So I'm going to fold this back and just do an edge stitch on it. And then I see right here that, whoops, I had the wrong type of stitch selected. I didn't want to do a zigzag stitch. So I'm going to cut the thread and show you another crucial part of sewing. And that is taking out all of the work that you just did. And so in the back here is a little container. And you can't see it on screen, but I'm pulling out a seam ripper with a little sharp pointed tool that can get in between the individual threads on the garment on a stitch and can pull them apart. So you'll get to see this crucial part of sewing. When I was putting the collar on my shirt, I had to take it out two different times before I got the collar to lay down evenly and come out correctly on either side of the shirt. And a lot of that is just learning how much you have to finesse one piece of fabric as it so is sewn onto another.
So that was really quick. Got that done. Now I've set my stitch to proper straight stitching. Does the back stitch. And I just hold the cloth, watching the edge of where it meets the needle and manipulate it and work with it as it needs to be shifted back and forth in order to keep the stitch straight. And there's two little pieces of metal underneath the fabric. They look like they have little teeth on them. And those actually pull the fabric through in a straight line. So for the most part, it's relatively easy to sew straight, um, as long as you get a good start with it. So that concludes the test. So let me know what you thought of this video. Any suggestions you might have for improvements? Any particular part that you found triggered your ASMR? Because I would definitely like this to be a series that's not only instructional, as I'm learning, but is also relaxing and helps you guys sleep or tingle. So leave a comment. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of them, please subscribe. Thanks, guys.